Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we're going to be looking at my WT960 hot points bearings um, as they've started to fail, and I'll show you the shaft actually what it looks like. Um, it, it's pretty bad. Um, it's clearly been leaking for a while, and I think I've just caught it in the nick of time. As it don't sound bad, but they aren't obviously going to last much longer so I thought you know what do it do them now and kind of fix all the wiring in it as it is a bit of a mess in there but you know it's, it is what it is from whoever had it last they clearly didn't really care how it looked on the inside which I suppose it doesn't matter but to just for my sake I'll probably clean it all up and make it look good um, but anyways in this video I'm going to try and show you how to do the bearings on one of these if I can I think I have shown before on a indusit I think which is you know bearings are all the same how you get them out and all that but i thought you know i didn't want a hot point wt960 and kind of show you how to do them i suppose you can use this video for other wma models um as this back off the drum is literally the same as a wma or you know wt i know it's a bit different as it's a seven kilo back half but that don't really matter so anyways i'm gonna try and <laughs> show you but i've obviously been doing this for a few years now so i've kind of just gotten used to it I suppose and I kind of know how to do it but I'm not really great at explaining things but we'll give it a go anyways so let's get the tools we need so you want one of these call it a rod that's what I've got a metal rod and I just shove a socket onto the end like that and then um I normally I normally put the big end onto the big bearing but when I do the small one and I don't really need that much power so I just put this end onto a little bearing and then work my way around like that because you want to work it around evenly so it makes it easier to come out and I've got a socket on the end to just give it a bit more service for the hammer to hit onto so it don't slip on my hand constantly even though it still does so let's give it a go then see how hard this is So when you do this, you can just move them. And in this case, it has moved a little bit, but it's going to take a fair bit of hammering, I think. It's annoying as well because the drum wants to move away, but there's nothing you can do about that. And also as well, actually, no, that has almost come out. I thought it might be resting on the wood, but it isn't. So if I give this a few more punches, it should just come out. It's almost there. This is the issue as well because I don't want it resting on the wood, but I don't know if you can see that, but the bearing is just about coming out. I think I need to hit more the bottom side towards me. A few more taps and it should be out. There we go, that's that bearing out. Let's move the tab out of the way for a moment. And that's the first bearing out of it. Uh, yeah, this bearing ain't exactly the greatest. It hasn't really got any Mm, it's got a little bit of play, but I suppose it's okay if it was re-greased, but I don't really think you can re-grease these too easily. Uh, it's an SK SKF bearing, 6206, and the other one is 6207 if you're interested. All right, now we've got the easy one out. We've got to get the hard one out, which is an absolute pain in the, in the bum, which is always fun, I suppose, even though it's a pain. So then you flip the drum over, and we get our blocks of wood and put them under the drum so we protect the drum from getting damaged as we don't want that to happen but anyway so when we hammer because obviously i don't really think you can see too well what i'm doing is i'm going around in the different spots this is going to be pushing it around evenly so when this bearing comes out it won't well it don't really matter if it comes out lopsided i suppose but it's just more because it make your life easier when you're pushing this bearing out is obviously you don't really want to make more work for yourself than really need to at the end of the day so let's get on with this and see how difficult this one is so i may just end up ripping that uh, bearing so if it won't come out um, too easily um 
as that's what I did with the WMA 37 is it was just getting in the way and it was just taking ages so I just ripped it out. But if you've got enough force behind it, you can probably just push it out pretty easily, depending on how strong you are. But well, I don't really think I said this, but I think as well, this job ain't really for the faint hearted as <laughs> it isn't really too easy. It's probably one of the most difficult washing machine jobs you can do. So let's get on with it and see where we get. So what I've just done is I've um, just moved the uh, well removed the bearing seal, so it's going to make my life hopefully a bit easier. I mean I, th I wasn't going to bother, but if it's going to make it easier to remove the bearing, then you might as well do it. So if you can remove the bearing seal, then give it a shot. But if you can't remove it, then you're just going to have to try and hammer it out uh, with the um, bearing. But I'm getting there with it. I'm kind of working my way back and forth between the bearing. It's a lot more work <laughs> than the back one though, mind you, but we'll get there. Right, we're ready for this. I feel like as well doing it like this, like keep moving around the drum gives me like, because I can hit it better when the, um, this metal rod's towards me. There we go, that's the bearing out at last. All right, let's have a look. So that's the back side of the bearing. As you can see, it's a Explorer bearing. Oh no, it's an SKF, sorry. I don't know what that means. Um, but then this side is the rusty side. And I think that's where this machine was obviously going wrong. Um, as you can see, it was quite rusty. It's not as bad, I don't think, as my WMA-37, as that was quite horrendous. I don't know, we have to compare it, as I still actually have that bearing from it. Um, yeah, so that's a water seal, and as you can see, I removed the bearing seal. Sorry, there you, are, you can see now. Yeah, I removed the bearing seal, so it made my life a bit easier. But like I say, I think it's time for reassembling to clean the shaft up and all that and get it all back together at last. So I've wrapped the bearing up in tissue just to help it out. Um, I have cleaned everything up now, so it's ready to go back together. As you can tell, I don't really care about the old bearing, but it's just a way of getting the um, new one in. Bearing, but I know it's sealed, but still. Um, but 
this tissue ain't looking too good though, mind you. <laughs> now, let me go and get some new tissue because I don't really want all this crap that's on the old bearing going into it. Scrap that idea, we've given the bearing a bit more of a clean, so hopefully we can now press it in. Right, okay, so that's the front bearing in. Let's try and get this water sewer. It's always an absolute nightmare to do due to its stupid design. That's what I mean, it is so difficult to put these in. If it was all rubber, it probably would be easier. Saying that it's almost in, this is probably the easiest one I've actually ever done. <laughs> Normally they're quite difficult. Yeah, no, I think a bit more and it should be okay. Missed. more this side I think and a bit more the other side there we go I think that's actually in feels in to me I think maybe a bit more here I don't know I don't the issue is you don't want to keep doing it because well I don't know I mean you can keep doing it I suppose if you don't think it's in well, I think that's in. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do the back bearing and get it all back together. Okay, so in theory, in theory, this should be the easiest bit. I say that with no confidence. Right, let's put this one in then. Pass that in. Um, I think what I'll do, no, actually, don't I? I'm gonna go and get a bit of tissue and wrap this bearing up in it because I can, as it's only gonna go, have to go flush with this bit of metal here. Flush to me now, so I think actually I'll do it a bit more. I'll do it a bit more there. Um, yeah, no, I think we're all ready now. Let's put it all back together at last. I'm going to put a bit of silicon grease on the uh, shaft as that normally helps out the um, bearings a little bit. You shouldn't really use any other grease than other than silicon grease, as water seals aren't really made for um, grease if you know your stuff. Right, okay, let's start reassembling it then. Right, let's put a bit of this silicone grease on. Not too much, but you know, just put enough on that it'll help it out. And put it all over. more, I'm going to get that drum on, 
Let's right, say so you don't really want it swimming in the stuff, but you want it so there's enough on there that it will help you out a bit. And easy. I doubt this um, could have gone very easy because I stoved the end over a bit by accident. And I was trying to get the um, shaft out from the bearing bit. I think what I'll do is I might just um, screw it up. Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> it's pretty dark outside, but there was a lot that went on just a moment ago. Well, not a moment ago, but a moment ago for you. Um, basically, what happened was the um, pulley, uh, no, not pulley, the um, the shaft with the, um, obviously, the end bit, what the um, pulley sits on, I had stoved it over by accident, so I had to, um, um, I had to file it down because it was a bit too big to fit on the pulley, and I had to re-thread the... Um, the uh where the screw goes into and i've put a new screw in as well just because i had one because i had to go to helford's and go and get one so it's finally back together now whether or not we're gonna work is completely questionable i know it turns on but i'm gonna put it on a rinse and spin and see how watertight we are we'll just do it on this no that's a spin right that's a rinse right there we go, off we go. Let's see how we do. This is always the worst bit, <laughs> testing it, because you never know if it's actually going to leak or not. Right, I'll report back to it when it actually um, gets up to the um, higher water level, which should be around here. So it seems to be okay, but there is one small issue. If you look through the hole, maybe, I don't really know if I can get the camera to... Um, point at it but the sump's actually leaking a bit from the join on the drum so I'm gonna have to um try and tip it on its back and tighten it I suppose which isn't most fun but it is what it is I suppose other than that it seems to be all right and it seems to be watertight enough I think I've seen enough so let's stop it cancel that So we're now draining and yeah, it is still dripping a little bit. I don't know if you yeah, you're just about to see. So I'm going to have to tilt it on its back. I'm going to put it on a spin first just to hear how it sounds and then uh, put it on its back and try and do that screw up a bit tighter, I suppose. I did think I did it up pretty tight, but I guess not. All right, then I'll catch you in a moment. I'm going to probably record again when it's at 1600 and we'll see what we think of the noise see if it sounds any better I suppose